Boggle was a, a game made by Parker Brothers, uh, and you'd roll the dice and you'd create a grid of, of letters and you'd make words from them. And my mother and I played a lot. Besides being an artist, she was a crossword puzzle enthusiast. She did word games, and so, you know, sitting at her knee, I learned a lot of those kinds of things. And we, we played a lot of Boggle. So one of the games I did while at Atari is I said, well, I've, I've figured out a way to make the Atari 2600 put letters on the screen, which hadn't been possible prior to that time. And I was able to make a grid of letters. I said, gee, I could play, you know, make a Boggle game out of this. And I did. I probably spent three or four weeks getting it to the point where I could do proof of concept, and, and here it is. And I went to my boss, and I said, you know, we probably couldn't sell any of these if we just called it Word Game, because there's Boggle is out there. So why don't we license Boggle and put out this game? And he took that up the chain to marketing, and the reaction was actually hilarious, because they came back and they said, you want us to pay someone else to license their name to put on one of our games? No, no, we, we, we have our own games. We have our arcade games, and we license the names of those. We're not going to pay for license. People pay us to license our stuff, you know? And, of course, now every game has a license on it. You know, that's you know, well known in the art today. But they actually came back and said, we're not going to pay somebody for a license for the game. So it went on the shelf and never got released. Now, when I left Atari, um, I didn't take anything with me, didn't take any code, didn't take any games. So as far as I knew, that game was lost forever. And I don't know where it came from, but somebody found it some, you know, one day, pretty recently, I think, in the last 10 years, somebody found this code. And uh, so it exists. You can download Boggle for a 2600 emulator. Um, I thought it was lost forever. I was recently cleaning out my mother's house. 92-year-old mother had to go into assisted living, so her house had to be figured out and closed. And she had saved everything I'd ever sent her from Activision, from Atari, from any of these days. And I found um, the handwritten instructions that I'd written for how to play Boggle that I sent her so that she could play it. And I sent her an EEPROM version so that she could play it on her computer, her 2600. Um, and just recently turned that up, um, you know, less than a year ago. And I just dropped it off at the National Video Game Museum the other day. Well, I learned my craft at Atari, certainly. I had never designed a video game. Um, I designed games, I designed tic-tac-toe and, and such. Um, but Designing a video game is, is a very special art. Um, it, it does require both artistic skill and technical skill. And so while at Atari, I honed that craft. Uh, when I went on to Activision, um, Atari didn't like the fact that we left Atari to form Activision, but they couldn't do anything about it because we had simply honed our craft there and everyone is allowed to pursue their craft at another company without, uh, you know, undo, um, undo what? <laughs> without, without receiving undue flack from the other company. So I, I would certainly say that uh, one of the things that I took out of Activision or of Atari was the ability to hone my craft um, and learn really how to make a video game. Also, while at Atari, um, Nolan Bushnell was still around, although at the time I was there, he was kind of being pushed out by the new corporate regime. Um, but I, I did learn from Nolan something that was just kind of interesting. To this day, I mean, Nolan has a term that he uses, a simple word, and that's neat. If he looks at something and he says, that's neat, he'll invest in it. Simple as that. So when he looked at a video game or a video game concept or a proof of concept or whatever, you know, he would basically, that was the bar. Is that neat? Hey, that's neat. Go ahead and do it. So it, it is kind of, uh, it's kind of nice to know that you can make those decisions just on the, the gut feeling of, hey, I like it. Other people are going to like it.